Sherry Tatoki, Senior Director of Startup Programs with GreenViz. Well, that's it. Good to see everyone for this final so conversation hard. on our keynotes. <laughs> Thought, you got comfy yeah, there? I thought, yeah. thought we were a little, <laughs> no, I thought a little we were soft landing. For our cushions. Yeah. All right. <laughs> well, we're really excited for this conversation. We've heard a lot this week about how we're at this inflection point where the decisions we make today will really be affecting the speed and scale of our transition to a cleaner economy. So I'm really excited for this conversation today to be talking about how we can collaborate and accelerate new climate technologies. Uh, Mike, you are the former CTO of Meta, now launch your own nonprofit Carbon to Sea initiative, as well as Gigascale Capital VC firm. Sophie, uh, you as well, you yourself are a startup founder and also launched uh, the wildly successful CTVC platform, as well as your own VC firm as well, Planetier Capital. So let's get right to it. Okay. Uh, so, you know, scaling new climate technologies is hard, right? It can take a lot of stakeholders, partnerships, funders. Can you talk about how you think about implementing new climate technologies and especially the collaboration needed to scale it? Mike, why don't we start with you? Yeah. I mean, I think the first myth I want to bust is we can't build things quickly. So, you know, in 2011, I commissioned our first data center at, at Meta. Ten years later, we had 28 buildings in 18 locations all over the world. So this was much more than a 10x scale in less than 10 years. Uh, and that's because it was like mission critical for us. It was imperative for the business. And so I think that's the key to these collaborations mm -hmm. is they have to be win-win, right? It can't be on good faith. It has to be as a business owner, I want to do this because this is good for me. And as a startup or others, they want to do it because it's good for them. I think I can give lots of examples, but one specifically in the climate space is obviously the Frontier Advanced Market Commitment. Now my Meta and Alphabet and others you know, came together, said billion dollars in pre-purchasing of you know, carbon removals, that has spurned an entire industry of companies now that can out there and say, like, I have customers for my product. Now, what's in it for the companies in any new technological revolution? I saw this in mobile, I saw this in web, I saw this in AI. What happens is as soon as everyone's catch, caught on to this change is happening, there is several usually massive shortages in key technologies and key supplies. So outside of climate in the AI world, if you start a company, like, good luck buying GPUs. They're back ordered for a long time, are gonna pay through the nose to get them. Mm -hmm. All the people who are ahead of the game have them, and so they've got a multi-year head start. When you talk about the advanced market commitment and Frontier, if you're a big company now and wanna do verified carbon removals, you're gonna to have to wait five years. Right. Like all the suppliers are sold out thanks to Frontier. Now you're in the back of the line or you're gonna pay through the nose. So the real reason for an enterprise to, to partner is so that they get early access to the technologies and that can take advantage of it faster than their competitors do. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely, makes sense. Sophie? Mike said it well in terms of getting all of this uh, steel, like steel actually in the ground, the accelerants to get us there. I'd say anecdotally from our vantage point tracking all of the deal activity that's been happening over the past four-ish years or so at this point with CTVC, we're going from uh, a couple bullet points on a blog, right, of the deals that we're uh, individually getting done back in, let's call it kind of early, mid 2020s, through to now, uh, folks are scrolling pages and pages and pages, right, just to go through these early, mid, kind of somewhat late stage venture and private equity funding that's happening in climate. And we could write a whole adjacent newsletter with similar number of bullets of these corporate partnerships and important deployments that frankly we wish we had the space to be writing about as well. And we'll share some more about that I think later on in this panel. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And when you are, you know, your investors, you're always thinking about the risks and opportunities of any given investment. How should, you know, the corporations that are in the room, how should they be thinking about risks and opportunities when piloting any of these te new technologies when they're able to? Sophie? Hmm, good question. Um, I think if there's one thing that I'd like folks to take away, of course, coming from the much kind of early, early stage, precede and seed stage vantage point that we like to spend a lot of time at at Planetier, it's if you're a corporate in the room, there are ample partners of startups out there that are looking for you and that want to meet with you. These solutions exist today in a way that maybe they didn't not so long ago, um, and it's some of the best and brightest in the world that are frankly quitting their, quitting their job or coming out of the lab and really taking that leap to put this, um, 
science and technology and, and business models into action, um, they want to meet with you and there's a whole robust ecosystem that uh, has been there for a long time but has particularly accelerated over the past, let's call it kind of five, six years um, to help mature these businesses to a point where they really are ready to start talking that revenue language and, and dive into some of these partnerships together. Um, so I'd say it's different this time, right? We've been kind of knocking on, beating on this drum for, for some time. This isn't clean tech 1.0 days. These, these businesses are here, they're robust. Of course, uh, the cream will rise to the, rise to the top here and there's still some serious diligence and some um, uh, thoughts around who's gonna be with us for a, a long period of time, but the founders are out there and they want to meet with you. Um, so that's why I get energized coming to events like this, right, where we've got that neat mixing and mingling of um, some of the buyers and some of the solution-oriented folks, such that this isn't just a transition versus disruption debate. We can kind of find that messy middle and do that together. Right. Yeah. Mike, anything to add? No, I mean, I think Sophie nailed it. There, there is the facilities to support these companies from, you know, growth equity to infrastructure financing to DOE loans. like. And I'll tell you the difference between a company that's like, we've got this great idea, we hope it works, and I've got an LOI, I've got a partnership with a major manufacturer, I've got an offtake agreement. If we build it, they will buy it at this price, we will both make money. You've now got a ton of investors who are gonna be fighting to get into that company because that's gonna grow. And again, these businesses, you know, this is the other difference of Cleantech 1.0 is we've got this, this technological scale now that we didn't have before, that the pitch is like, when we get to scale, we're cheaper than your existing solution. Like, we are better, cheaper, and that's why you're gonna go with us. So you're really just trying to get through that beginning phase where it's like, okay, maybe at pilot scale, you're not there, there's some technical risk and others. But once we get to a commercial scale plant, I now have a advantage over my competitors because I got in on this technology and I now have access to it in a way that others don't. So I think that that's the, the key this time around. Yeah, yeah. So if you want to add anything about the, the capital stack, you know that Mike yeah. kind of touched on that. You talk about that a lot. At uh, if you, even if you hadn't asked, I was going to jump in <laughs> with that anyway. So yeah, this, uh, these words that we love so much, the climate capital stack. I don't know if, uh, I feel like I, I joke I need a tattoo or something that says the climate capital stack. I say this so frequently and I'm glad some of you are picking up on this with us, but um, the point being that y'all aren't alone. <laughs> Whether you're the startups that are innovating, the corporates that are purchasing, the funders that are funding, there's many, many layers to this complex ecosystem of folks that are specifically structured to underwrite and to take off some of those risks at certain points in that innovation to deployment maturation scale. And so we've talked about a couple of these players already, venture funders, right, the corporate off takers, but we're missing 20 different slices of this cake kind of in between, be that non-dilutive funding, catalytic capital, grants, some of these off take agreements, right? We're talking about um, some of that venture debt, lots of things that we've heard about through other conversations earlier today and, and, and other days here. But um, uh, point being, it's a language uh, that sometimes differs percentage by percentage across these different tranches. And my observation is that the more that we can learn each other's language, uh, we realize the more similarities that we actually have between these stages that don't need to be so, so much of a leap to kind of cross the cavern of. Um, the main language that works for everybody is just revenue. And as Mike was saying, when these pilots come out and um, a founder can go back to the investors that they're trying to raise equity capital from or some of those venture debt providers, and we can talk about real tangible things like LOIs or even better, some realized kind of pilot revenue, the game changes and um, dramatically and in a way that really shapes the fate of lots of these, of lots of these founders, I'd say, bringing it back to the data, and we're tracking all of these funding rounds that are happening, and we all know that we're in a little bit of a, or not a little bit, we're in a real kind of macro slump at the moment, particularly for these founders that are raising equity capital at the Series B stage or beyond, that's fallen off a cliff. I don't need to be the one to tell all of you that are kind of feeling that yourselves. It's the, the deals that get through are the ones where they have a pilot or some kind of partnership with these corporates, and also ideally have some version of a, um, a partnership with government entities, be that all the way through to the LPO or something kind of at a much earlier maturation stage. So those two things are really core unlocks for these businesses. Um, and I know some of you have the keys to the kingdom 
for those founders out there. And I just want you to know what an important position that you're in for the fate of, of some of these companies. Yeah, and speaking about that, the successful ones that are getting through, can you talk a little bit about you know, successful corporate startup partnerships that you've seen, as well as maybe some that haven't been as successful, or you know, maybe some lessons learned? Mike, do you want to speak about that? Yeah, I mean, I think we're, we're early on in this, but you've seen a bunch of important announcements. You know, Microsoft uh, doing a, a power purchase agreement with Helion, which is a fusion provider by 2028. Um, you've got Dow Chemical, you know, announcing that they're going to do an SMR plant somewhere in the Gulf Coast, a uh, small modular reactor to, like, co-site with one of their chemical plants. Like, that's a huge deal uh, for, for all of these providers, and that's the sort of highest risk start of the segment. Um, you have plenty of other things happening in green chemicals um, and battery storage, um, and, and others where, you know, the people are doing these agreements and getting them done. I'd like to hear what Sophie has to, to add. I, I mean, you're giving us a chance to kind of talk some of our own book here, so maybe I'll, <laughs> I'll uh, do this, like, anonymously, but, but, like, think of this. Really early stage company that's able to directly measure the emissions that are happening in a commercial and industrial heating and cooling setting, make automated adjustments to what's going on, and often those natural gas-powered boiler systems save so much money from those energy cost savings that then the building managers look amazing and want to reinvest that capital into going even further in reducing those direct emissions. So um, it's kind of a win-win, but it's all based on that, that sticky piece, which is saving the money um, and kind of creating that, that pocket of capital in order to go one step further and to really deepen these partnerships. Um, this is a company that's about a year old or so, and it's with working with some of the Fortune 100 banks and biggest REITs in New York City already, and um, uh, it just frankly makes everybody look really good. So it's not so much the stage or the age of the company at this point, so much as finding these early partnerships and kind of co-creating together, I'd say. Yeah, much of the deals we do, this is a deal we did together, uh, are so early, so a lot of their deals aren't out, so we can't actually right. talk about them in, in detail. But I'll give a, an example that talks about a trend that I think is really important. So there's a company we funded called Dioxycle, and they have an electrochemical cell that produces ethylene. It's a $200 billion commodity market. Um, they're getting a lot of traction with customers. And one of the reasons why is they are able to basically be profitable at a 30x smaller scale. Mm -hmm. So they have a technology advantage that happened and work out of Stanford and allows you to build a much smaller plant, a much smaller facility piece by piece, Lego bricks like we did the web infrastructure, um, and allow you to take a lot less risk because you're not building these mega projects, hoping it all pencils when it actually is done. You can build something small, see that it works, start getting profit and go from there. So they, they are sort of overwhelmed with interest for that. And we're seeing this similarly and a lot of these things where how quick is your time to value you know, in buildings, right. um, in chemicals, in others. And when you can provide these small solutions, small in terms of total capital outlay, that get profitable very quickly, uh, like demand is outstripping supply. Yep. Mm -hmm. Which may be kind of riffing off, you know, this isn't all glass half full, even though maybe that's how we sometimes like to think <laughs> about it. But for some of these examples where the partnerships haven't worked out or are recently, yeah. particularly in a non-zero interest rate phenomenon type of environment, not currently penciling, those tend to be these massive upfront capital outlays, and uh, I don't need to tell you guys what some of those are. You're reading the news and you're seeing them yourselves, right? This is where um, we're maybe reliant on many, many years of subsidy or at least zero interest phenomenon kind of conditions in order for the economics to pencil. Um, Mike and I get excited about some of these businesses, um, or frankly, about businesses, period, that uh, you don't have to squint to kind of look at the economics. Yeah, makes sense. So as we're wrapping up Verge and our final kind of keynote conversation here, we think about you know, when we meet back here in a year, mm -hmm. what would you like to see uh, in this community, what would you like to see prioritized? I'd be excited to talk names about the company that we just described yeah. and some other specific. I'll tell you what, I want, rather than us talking about this, I want you to have a panel full of people in the audience here describing all the awesome pilots they're doing with these I amazing agree. startups building great yes. technologies and I how that's going to transform their businesses, how their CFOs are happy with them, because like this pencil's in the long run. And that's really the game we have to get into yeah. to make this scale. Mm -hmm. Well said. Deepen, widen the sophisticated capital stack. And a large part of that comes from corporates and, and from, these, from these partnerships. You're here. Yeah, absolutely. Well, thank you both so much for joining thank me you. today. Thanks for sticking with us, folks. I yeah. know we're right down to the bitter end. Yes. So thank you very Please much. Please join me in thanking <laughs> Sophie and Mike. Thank you. So.